The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus was born in 55 AD in modern-day Turkey. In Greek, the word Epictetus means acquired or gained. In fact, he came to Rome as a slave of the rich and powerful freedman Epaphroditus, who himself once had been a slave of the emperor Nero. Celsus, who was a younger contemporary of Epictetus, narrated an account that once Epaphroditus tortured Epictetus and twisted his leg. He endured the pain with his characteristic patience and tolerance, while warning his master that his leg would break. And when it broke, Epictetus said, Did I not tell you that it would break? From here onwards, Epictetus was lame. I'm so inspired by his patience and composure that I would call Epictetus the prophet of endurance. Here I would emphasize that it wasn't an episode of passive endurance. We'll go deeper into this phenomenon later in the animated video by undertaking the case study of James Stockdale's historic cavalry and endurance. So watch this video till the end. I shall make good use of the limited resources available in the form of references in ancient texts, along with the information available in Epictetus' book Discourses to make a sketch of his life. I am your friendly guide, Mr. Smart. Subscribe to me and hit the bell button before watching any further so that I can continue to craft such animated videos with love and care, especially for you. His master gave Epictetus the permission to study philosophy from the Stoic Masonius Rufus, who became his teacher and mentor. Epictetus gained freedom shortly after the death of Emperor Nero. That's how he started teaching Stoicism in Rome. He taught philosophy there for about 25 years. When the Emperor Domitian expelled all philosophers from Rome, Epictetus fled to Nicopolis in Greece, where he opened his own school. His teachings and reputation attracted many upper-class Romans. Flavius Arian was one such student who later composed the discourses in the handbook and Caridian. Epictetus' influence was strong and wide-ranging. For example, Marcus Aurelius in the first book of meditations titled Deaths and Lessons thanks his teacher, Junius Rusticus, in these words. I am indebted to him, Junius Rusticus, for being acquainted with the discourses of Epictetus, which he communicated to me out of his own collection. What is special about Stoicism is that its three towering practitioners, including Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius, belong to such different social strata. Epictetus was a slave, Contrarily, Seneca was an advisor to the emperor, a well-known playwright, and a wealthy person. Marcus Aurelius was one of the most powerful individuals of his time as the Roman emperor. That's why Stoicism provides golden principles of life, which are neither bound by time nor place. It tells us how to avail fortune, as well as bear misfortune. Now, I shall summarize Epictetus' book, Discourses, for my subscribers and viewers. Don't forget to watch the exclusive animated video about the handbook, or Inca Radian, as well. I've put its link in the card and description for your convenience. The Discourses Actually, Epictetus has not written any books himself. Rather, it's through his student, Flavius Arian, that we have a written account of his Stoic philosophy. It consists of the lectures of Epictetus to his students and their earnest discussions. The main theme of his teaching and discussions is how to live a better life as a Stoic. They would deliberate over diversified topics, ranging from friendship to familiar relations, from poverty to broken health, from acquiring peace of mind to treating people well. In fact, Ethics and morality are the cornerstones of Epictetus' teachings. He was concerned with practice, not theory. The book Discourses is deeply rooted in common sense and experience, which continue to positively influence people's lives today. Now let us discuss the oft-repeated themes in Discourses. Be proactive. Be proactive in your life. And don't blame any other people or the circumstances around you for your hardships and failures. We are the product of our own decisions and responses. Epictetus says, when we're frustrated, angry, or unhappy, 
never hold anyone except ourselves, that is, our judgments, accountable. We are responsible for our own success or failure, fortune or misfortune, happiness or sadness. Traffic jams on the way to the office, internet browsing takes a little longer than it should, a coworker cracks a joke at our expense, or our smartphone freezes right in the middle of an important business call. What's our reaction? Rage, or at least irritation. Such unnecessary anger or other negative emotions have a debilitating effect, rendering us unable to fight the crisis at hand effectively. Negativity always overshadows our mental faculties. Rather, we should be proactive and take responsibility. Look at the word responsibility, which means the ability to choose our responses. Epictetus writes, Remember, it is not enough to be hit or insulted to be harmed. You must believe that you're being harmed. If someone succeeds in provoking you, you realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. My fellows, does be proactive sound familiar to your ear? Yes, it does. Centuries after the lectures of Epictetus to his students, Stephen Covey, in his groundbreaking book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, underlines be proactive as the first of the seven habits. Your friendly guide, Mr. Smart, has made a complete series of animated videos about the seven habits for his subscribers. You can conveniently find the links in the card and description. Respect the process and timing. You want to be a successful entrepreneur. You want to be a corporate leader. You want to be a world-class boxer. Or maybe you want to be an Olympic swimmer. Epictetus has the same advice for all of you. Respect the process. So, be a hustler who knows how to work hard with consistency, master his craft, and meet opportunities with preparedness. The hustler achieves success because he respects the process while knowing what it really takes to achieve the seemingly impossible. In the golden words of Epictetus, nothing important comes into being overnight. Even grapes and figs need time to ripen. If you say that you want a fig now, I will tell you to be patient. First, you must allow the tree to flower, then put forth fruit. Then you have to wait until the fruit is ripe. So if the fruit of a fig tree is not brought to maturity instantly or in an hour, how do you expect the human mind to come to fruition so quickly and easily? So, if you want to be an entrepreneur, get ready for your early startups to fail. If you want to be a boxer, don't expect you'll get away without breaking a few bones. Just hustle, master your craft, respect the process, and wait for the fruit of success to ripen. Such is the wisdom of Epictetus. Focus on what is in your control. What is in our control and what is not in our control? That is a pertinent question. Our capacity to adapt ourselves to the external circumstances is in our control, while the external circumstances themselves are out of our control and power. In the words of Epictetus in the handbook, some things are up to us, and some things are not up to us. Our opinions are up to us, and our impulses, desires, aversions, in short, whatever's our own doing. However, our bodies are not up to us, nor are our possessions, our reputations, or our public offices, or, that is, whatever's not our own doing. Epictetus refers to what's in our control as internals and what's out of our control as externals. What happens to us is external, while how we respond to it is internal. Say a horrible earthquake came and demolished the whole town. That's external, while how we would respond to this disaster is internal. Our immediate response should be the rescue and evacuation of the survivors, rather than getting entrapped in a spiral of grief and sorrow. Later, we'd need to make and follow new construction methods to build houses and buildings which can withstand such earthquakes. Many problems in human life are the direct result of our inability to differentiate between the internals and externals. If we try to control the externals while fully neglecting the internals, we jeopardize our happiness, freedom, and success. That's the recipe for disaster. 
The Three Topoi In discourses, Epictetus highlights three areas of study and discipline which can lead to a happy, satisfied, and virtuous life. He writes, There are three areas in which the person who would be wise and good must be trained. The first has to do with desires and aversions, that a person may never miss the mark in desires nor fall into what repels them. The second has to do with impulses to act and not to act, and more broadly, with duty, that a person may act deliberately for good reasons and not carelessly. The third has to do with freedom from deception and composure and the whole area of judgment, the assent our mind gives to its perceptions. Of these areas, the chief and most urgent is the first, which has to do with the passions, for strong emotions arise only when we fail in our desires and aversions. Now, Mr. Smart will explain these three areas of discipline one by one for his subscribers. First, there is discipline of desire. We get frustrated and angry when we desire the externals which are out of our control. Epictetus remarks in discourses. When I see a man anxious, I say, what does this man want? If he did not want something which is not in his power, how could he be so anxious? Secondly, there is discipline of action. That is, we need to discipline our actions in accordance with our role in life as a father, brother, son, and so on. We should be patient, gentle, considerate, just, even-tempered, and courageous in dealing with our relations and the wider community. The third is the discipline of assent. It means to approve, agree, or go along with. It concerns with saying, yes, this is how it is. Let me quote Epictetus from the Discourses. The third area of study has to do with assent and what is plausible and attractive. For just as Socrates used to say, that we're not to lead an unexamined life, so neither are we to accept an unexamined impression. But to say, stop, let me see what you are and where you come from. Just as the Night Watch say, show me your token. So Epictetus's three areas of study and discipline are desires, action, and assent. Choose your friends very carefully. As the old cliche goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Epictetus warned his students against associating themselves with people who are leading a negligent life. He remarks, It is inevitable, if you enter into relationships with people on a regular basis, that you will grow to be like them. Remember that if you consort with someone covered in dirt, you can hardly avoid getting a little grimy yourself. Now let us discuss the case study of James Stockdale's historic cavalry and endurance. To understand whether the Stoic teachings of Epictetus result into active endurance or the passive kind. Admiral James Stockdale, an American prisoner of war in Vietnam, in his autobiography, Courage Under Fire, credits the teachings of Epictetus for inspiring him to bear the tortures for seven long years. From 1965 to 1973, being a United States Navy Vice Admiral, he was the highest-ranking prisoner in the Vietnam War and was later awarded the Medal of Honor. Out of the seven years of imprisonment, he spent four years in solitary confinement with two years in leg irons. He patiently bore all this because of the wisdom and endurance of Epictetus in his mind. In his wise and golden words, Sickness is a hindrance to the body, but not to your ability to choose, unless that is your choice. Lameness is a hindrance to the leg, but not to your ability to choose. Say this to yourself with regard to everything that happens, then you'll see such obstacles as hindrances to something else, but not to yourself. It was this spirit that enabled Admiral Stockdale to withstand the physical and mental torture gracefully and intelligently. Later, the author Jim Collins popularized the Stockdale paradox through his best-selling book, Good to Great. It means to impartially evaluate your current situation and balance optimism with realism. Mr. Smart will put the idea for you in these words. Acknowledge your current position 
actively seek solutions to your current problems and endure your hardships with unbreakable patience and tolerance, like Epictetus and James Stockdale. That's how it's an active endurance, not a passive one. Let us further explore the impact of Epictetus' teachings during Admiral James Stockdale's struggle. This will highlight just how active his endurance was. James was held captive in the Hanoi Hilton camp, with no prisoner rights, no set date for release, and no certainty that he would be kept alive. During these trying times, he not only strengthened himself, but also his fellow prisoners, as he would encourage them to resist any attempt by their captor to use them as propaganda. In one instance, he disfigured his face with a razor so that he could not be filmed and portrayed as a well-treated prisoner of war in a propaganda video. He also exchanged intelligence information with his wife through their letters, even though he knew this activity could endanger his life. Further, he established an elaborate system of internal communication with his fellow prisoners to reduce the impact of solitary confinement that their captors were trying to instill. But how on earth was he able to do it with such fortitude, intelligence, and active endurance? Admiral James Stockdale, in his book Courage Under Fire, credits Epictetus' teachings for giving him the strength to make this heroic episode of cavalry and active endurance a reality. My fellows, I'm your friendly guide, Mr. Smart. I make these animated videos to inspire you to lead a successful, satisfied, and well-balanced life. Subscribe to me and hit the bell button if you don't want to miss any such video. If you want to transform your life in accordance to the stoic principles of life, I have compiled a list of recommended books in the description. Furthermore, let me know in the comments section what topics you want me to cover next.